Hello guys, welcome to Air Graphics, the designer's companion. I am ICRX, your favorite tour guide, who is always here to take you on the journey of mastering the ins and outs of Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. In today's lesson, we will be focusing on Adobe Photoshop, where I will be teaching you how to edit any scanned document in Photoshop. Now, before we begin the process, I would like to leave you with two basic requirements in order to pull off this trick. First off, you need the document you want to edit to be in a picture format either by using a scanner or by taking a clear snapshot of the hard copy document. Now, another thing you could do is to export the pages of the particular soft copy PDF or Word document into pictures using the respective software or by dragging the document into Photoshop and selecting the number of pages you want to import and then you can import or save it as a JPEG or PNG or any picture format. Now, the second requirement is that you will need to identify the font used in the document to be able to change the text with something similar. To do this, go to your browser and type in the web address whatfontis.com. Now on the home page, click on browse by clicking here. Locate the image you want to identify each font. Now click on it, allow it to process, and then click and crop out the particular place you want to identify. When you are done, click on next step. Now it wants you to optimize the image of visibility. You just click on auto adjust and then next step. Now fill in the empty boxes of text in order to help it identify the exact text. Now click on display only free fonts. Click on next step. Now, here are a list of free fonts that are similar to the particular one in the document. Usually, the first five fonts are the precise font. So, we're picking from that, and I'll choose Open Sans Bold because it looks more like what I saw in the document. I'll click on Download to download it. Click on Download Font. Click on Download. Now, click on Download Link. Then your download begins at the bottom here as you can see. Now when it's done, go over to your download and click on open sans. Now the zip file has been open. Select the entire text, copy them to your desktop, select all of them, right click and install. As you can see it's telling me the font open sans is already installed. I want to replace and I click on no. And it will not ask you that because you might not have the font already. Now when you are done downloading and installing the font, go back to Photoshop and open up the page of documents you want to edit. Now take your type tool, shortcut is T on your keyboard, draw a text box right on top of the line of text you want to edit. After drawing it, hold down control on your keyboard and move the text box away from the text so you can see what you want to type in. Now type in exactly the same word you want to change. Now, you are going to select everything and make sure you are using a contrasting color with the text you want to change and select the font you just installed, which is Open Sans Old. Now, click OK, go to your Move tool, move it down, Ctrl T to transform, scale it to fit. If it still doesn't fit, hold down your control on your keyboard and move the sides to skew it, make sure it fits rightly. And when you are satisfied, click OK. Now, if after skewing and scaling, it still doesn't fit appropriately, then you go to your character's panel. If you don't find it here, go to your windows and make sure that character is still on. Then check your tracking, your, your horizontal scale, or vertical scale. Check them and make sure they are at their default position. If it still doesn't fit, then try editing the words separately in the separate text boxes. Now, create a new layer right on top of the original layer by holding Ctrl Shift N on your keyboard. Create a new layer. Take your brush tool and then hold alternate to sample the color around this text. Increase the size of your brush by right clicking and increasing the size of your brush here. Make sure the hardness is zero. Paint on this layer around the text. This would help to cover up the underlining layer. To the original document. Now go back to your text, 
open up the character panel turn the text and the background off whilst you're on your text layer click on the color and sample this color change it to blue now watch what happens when i turn back our text just change the black to blue we can now enter into our own desired text by double clicking on the text and now writing something like You can repeat this process for another line of text by going to your type tool, drawing the text box on another line of text, then move it down and type in exactly the same word on the text line. Now select the whole text, take this down to regular. Click OK, go to your move tool, remove text box and Ctrl T, transform, and then scale. Click on OK. Go to the layer we created before, which is serving as our mask to cover up the underlining original layer. Take your brush tool and sample color around. Paint on it. Make sure your brush is not so big, because if it's big, you start to see that the paint starts covering the other lines of text. After that, you go back to your text layer, click on the characters panel, and change the color. Sample any of this black without zooming by pressing Ctrl and Plus on your keyboard. Sample this color. You can now edit and change the word by double clicking on it. No doubt, this is a very easy example for the fact that the background is plain white. Now what if you are going to edit a document that has a rough background? Here is the document with a very rough background of an image I was gotten from a scanner. Now if you observe closely, the line of text has this rough texture on it. So it means if we should just paint with white, it will appear non-realistic. So how do we replicate that? Very easy. You would also do the same as we did in the last example by going to your type tool, draw a text box right on it, move the text box above and type in the originator's name. No doubt from experience that this typeface is area. So select everything and search for area. Area regular. Remember I always use a contrasting color so you can fit it right on it appropriately. Now go to your move tool. Ctrl T to transform, hold Ctrl and move this edge. You see the MR is lost right now because we didn't increase our text box to make it appear. It now it's back. Now, just as we did in previous example, select the original layer, create a new layer on top by holding Ctrl, Shift and N. Take your brush tool and once you see this dot here, instead of the regular circle, just turn off your caps lock on your keyboard and it get, becomes back to a normal circle icon for the brush. Now, hold on it, select the white around the text, not the rough part. Now, paint on need to cover the original text. Go back to the text, select the character panel, zoom in, take your color picker and select a color. Now it's looking like it, but we're not there yet. The next thing we'll have to do is create another layer on top of the background we've created. This time we are going to put our polygonal lasso to just some distance away from the line of text. Make a selection around it. Then right click for more options and feather so about one or two pixels. Take your brush tool. This time we are going to select the most prominent color out of this texture behind. I'm going to select this shade of grey. Now I'm going to paint right inside this selection. Deselect by pressing Ctrl D. And you can see the layer I just created. Next, we'll go to filter. Select filter gallery and zoom in. Good texture. Select green. You do the intensity to about 40 and contrast should be about 45. And the green type should be between regular or soft. I like mine being as regular. Click on OK. But this is looking really unrealistic. So go to our blend mode. Turn down the fill to about 45%. Then the opacity as well. Turn it down to 75%. Now you can see it's now sub to 
If it's looking too dark, you can adjust the levels using Ctrl L on your keyboard. Bring up the highlights so as to hide more of the shadow. You click on OK. Now, above the texture, if you observe, you can see some kind of noisy pattern on it. So we need to create that. To do that, create a new layer on top. Then make the same selection, feather, and then paint our brush tool to select and then go to our blend mode and change it to dissolve reduce the opacity to about 75 percent fill to about 50 percent now you can see the noise right above it now you can merge the both layers by right clicking and click on merge layers or shortcut ctrl e on the keyboard now if you zoom out, you take a look at the difference between your edited background and others, you see that yours is appearing darker. You can work on that by adjusting the level, bringing up the highlights of that particular layer. There we have it, a noisy background appearing good enough. You can now replace your text. Now go to the underlining layer, we're going to go to T and stretch it out to fill in texture. Now there you have it. You can replicate this process, other lines of text, by not essentially repeating it. All you have to do is rename this texture layer, double click on the layer and name it texture. And the other one which is the layer where we painted white to cover the original layer. Background. Now, all you have to do is just duplicate this text by right clicking duplicate layer, then dragging the copied layer right above this other one and renaming it. Make sure it fits properly. Use a contrasting color. Now, duplicate the texture layer as well. And this time, move the layer from here down to the edited text and then stretch it to cover up the line of text. On the background, take your brush to select the color around there and paint, cover it up. Now you can edit just. Now the last thing we need to do is to blend the text to look similar to the already existing text in the document. When you zoom in, you can notice some pixelation in form of noise on the existing text. This is because it was scanned and it's in raster image format. So we need to replicate that on our new text. To do that, make sure you are selecting the text layer. Go to filter, click on noise, then add noise. Now, make sure preview is turned on so that you can see what you are doing. You will know the extent at which to add noise. Now, click on Gaussian, then increase the percentage to about 3%. Make sure monochromatic is not turned on and click on OK. When you zoom in, you can notice the new text is now looking similar to the already existing text. Now, repeat the same procedure for the other line of text which you have edited. Now the entire document is ready to be saved and exported into a PDF document. With this, we have come to the end of this lesson. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share to your friends, your foes, anyone at all who you feel would also benefit from the information dropped in this video. Now, if this is your first time of seeing my videos, please hit the subscribe button to become part of this family and also get notified as soon as I upload a new video. If I have missed anything in this video which you feel will be vital for this video, ensure to leave that in the comments below. And if you have any questions regarding what you've learned, also state that in the comment below and I'll be sure to reply as soon as possible. With that said, please stay creative.